Hi, I'm Denise Gagne. I'm the creator of Muse at Play and Muse at Play Online. Currently, I'm at musicplayonline.com, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Lesson 24, March Week 1 lessons from pre-K all the way up to Grade 6. So on the Classic site, this is our original website, Online Learning is on the left menu, and then you select your grade level. If you want an overview of Music Play Online, it's in a module right here. But I'm going to take you to the beta site. We are going to be retiring this site uh, probably at the end of the school year and moving to the beta site for next year. The beta site has significant advantages over the classic uh, and you'll see in, in some parts. So the learning modules are here and I'm going to filter by grade. I'm going to look for pre-K and lesson 24, March week one is here. This gives me an overview of the lesson, any supporting resources that I suggest are there, and we start by singing the echoes, it's music time, it's music time, and that's our um, starting song. And if you want to have the kids tap the beat with it, the beat strips are in supporting resources. Now I have a little friend, Bobo, that we use for warm-ups. Bobo. Bo, bo, bo. And we decorated him for St. Patrick's Day. You can see Kiss Me, I'm Irish. And next week, it'll be a little hat that is on him because the kids really like Bobo and it's fun for them to see the iterations of Bobo as the year has gone on. So echo what Bobo sings. Move to show beat or no beat. I, my suggestion is for you not to use the video. Just use the video for yourself for an idea of what you might do but then play the beat on drums yourself and have your students move when there's a beat and freeze when there's no beat. Create waves to move with count to seven. So I might go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever they think of, move to the, the words and counting is so easy for your little people that this is a song that they'll catch on to and they'll really enjoy. You could even use instruments and play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can watch what I did with my students or just make up your own. And then we have a storybook and this really isn't a musical storybook. This is a related storybook to reinforce literacy and relate to the songs that we're teaching. And it's my seven book and, um, it's just a counting, counting story. Then we do Here is the Beehive. These are my two lovely granddaughters here. When they were little, they're not so little anymore. Here is the beehive. Where are the bees? Hidden away where nobody's, hidden away where nobody sees. Watch and you'll see them come out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz. So it's a good vocalise for kids when they buzz higher and lower. And here is the finger play again with the words, Bee, Bee, Bumblebee. Um, again, it's a little chant song. Bee, Bee, Bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I declare that you are out. And here's how I play the games with the little ones. You're going to have to adapt for COVID, probably have the kids farther apart, maybe use a flashlight to point to the children, bee, bee, bumblebee, um, so that I can show you, bee, bee, bumblebee, um, rather than passing the bumblebee around, at least until we're through this pandemic. But the one that's chosen runs around the circle and buzzes like a bee. And if they move their hands higher and lower to show how they're buzzing, all the kids copy them. Again, it's a great vocalise. It's a silly game and they like it. We're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. It won't be in the first week really of March. It'll be the second week. But uh, little, little people need to start a little earlier if they're going to sing those songs. So I Like Leprechauns actually uses the same melody that um, we have used previously. I like Valentine's. I like Valentine's. So they're going to be familiar with the melody already. And you can create actions to go with the song.
The Irish washerman, washerwoman is again an instrument song, play instruments along with the song simply to the beat. But we do three repetitions of it and each time it goes a little bit faster and a little bit higher in this case. Um, so invite the children to tell you how the music changes and see if they recognize that. The letter X is our letter of the week. So here's the ox and fox story. You can tell it to them. Um, oral storytelling is still a really good skill for kids to listen and hear and make those pictures in their own minds. And then they sing, letter X says X, letter X says X. Um, and then we do the ox and the fox story. Ox and a fox jumped in and ox and a fox jumped into a box, but the box was much too small. And so it's a cute little song. You can watch the movements and then you can sing and do the movements yourself. There's an optional worksheet. If kids are virtual, they may not have printers at home. If you're in class, these worksheets can be a bit of a lifesaver for you, especially if you can't sing. So the, uh, the letter X worksheets, there's actually three of them. This is the one where they practice printing the X and drawing pictures. An option for your children at home is simply to ask them to take a piece of paper, practice some X's and draw two things that use the letter X. X starts uh, X-ray, X starts xylophone, but it's um, not a beginning sound for many words. So a box, a fox, you use the use those as examples, and we end the lesson with Skinnamarink. I can make all these videos full screen. This tool here slows down anything that I think is a little bit too fast. I just click on speed and then I choose whether I want to go faster or slower. So that is the pre-K lesson 24 for March week one. And now I'm going to talk about the kindergarten lesson for March week one, lesson 24. Many people use the pre-K program for kinders, and that's perfectly all right. If you have both, then um, you do have two different programs, but I do cross over material. So the outline will include Bobo, and then everything else is new. So we have welcome to school for our kindergartens, and we've done this now as a body percussion. Stop, 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 stop. repeat so they get another another round of it. Um, we're, we've made new rhythm videos. I'm going to just divert here and show you where they are. If I go into the beta site, currently rhythm is in the practice zone. I want this to disappear and I want rhythm practice on the left menu like it is on classic. But this is how I get to rhythm now, practice zone rhythm. I select what rhythms I want to practice with my students. So if I've selected ta, ti, ti, rest, now I have all these different videos. The new ones are in read, clap, and play, and they are all different, and they are all just beautiful. Everyone has a unique des design. You can do with body percussion. You can do with instruments. I'm going to desk drop to this one. fun music, fun activities. There's over a hundred new movie, uh, new videos for rhythm play alongs like this, and they're sequenced carefully so that they will take your students from very beginning levels all the way through to where your seventh and eighth, eighth graders should be. And they're all in the read, clap, and play section. So that is the new play along for Welcome to School. There's the Bobo Echo. 
And now we have dinosaurs and kids, there's always some kindergarten children that are absolutely fascinated with dinosaurs. So we have two, two dinosaur songs in this, um, in this lesson. Uh, dinosaurs lived long ago. <laughs> Urgh, stop, stop. Urgh. We found fossils so we know. Stop, stop. Grr, stop, stop, grr. Some were tiny in a very quiet voice. Some were huge in a loud voice. So after teaching the dinosaur song and creating movements to go with it, explore loud and quiet patterns and poems. And this interactive you may have used before, it's a great interactive. It starts with loud and quiet patterns. Loud, quiet, loud, loud and I would clap and say those patterns with my little guys. If you want, there's music you can play along. And there's also a really nice series of poems that you can say and decide which line you want loud. Order in the court. The judge is eating beans. His wife is in the bathtub counting submarines. And then you try different ways of doing it. So wonderful activity for loud and quiet. Um, I've also included coloring pictures of all the dinosaurs that are mentioned in the song. So you can give these to the kids to color. Again, for those of you that are in situations in person, you can't sing. Coloring pages are good. They're, uh, they're a good way to do things. And then I suggest that you have the kids color and then cut them out and then do body percussion with the dinosaur names. So I said, it, for example, pterodactyl clap, pterodactyl and Allosaurus stomp, Allosaurus, Brontosaurus, and I suggested for Plesiosaurus a quiet clap, Plesiosaurus, so using their dynamics. And of course, these are optional for kids that are at home. They may or may not have a printer, but in person, they're great activities. And then we have the dinosaur diddy -wah, and I got up in front of the green screen and created a movement video so you can just copy what I do. <laughs> Hear a little more of that than I'd intended. So sing and move to it. Here is the song video with the words. You might have some beginning readers in kindergarten at this point. Um, <clears throat> then we play instruments to the beat with Knotman's rambles. Is the music fast or slow? So we've already explored loud and quiet in this lesson. Now we explore whether it's fast or slow. And you can either play instruments to the music or you can invite the kids to create movement to the music. Both are fun. We did If You're Happy and You Know It last week, and many teachers reported they really enjoyed these percussion pieces. If you are looking for more play-along pieces, I'm going to actually, I'm going to, um, in the learning modules, in general, there is an instrument kit fun lesson. Oh, I miss, oh, here it is, Instrument Kit Fun. And in this module, there are lots and lots of instrument kit songs. And I've added, if you're happy and you know what, play the sticks, and instrument, and you fa if you know what, the instrument family version. And we'll be adding to this. Um, <clears throat> we really need the instrument songs this year and give those kids something to do with their pool noodle scrapers. So Alice the Camel, again, it was a big hit last week. This is one where if you're doing the um, the instruments, Alice the Camel had five humps, different instruments. You want to slow it down, so use the slow downer button to change the speed. And then review a tisket a tasket. This is a chase game. Adapt it however you can do to your situation. And then the interactive beaten rhythms for Itisca to Task that I left the link in in case you want to do more of those. And then if you haven't already viewed the Safe Share link to Ella Fitzgerald's Itisca to Task, it, it's a really, really good video. She's a wonderful performer. She's a wonderful example of um, uh, 
for Black History Month of a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful singer that truly paved the way for many others. And we end by singing Skin of Rink. So that is the Kindergarten Lesson 24 for March Week 1. Now I'm going to look at Grade 1, Lesson 24. And Grade 1 is also doing clapping rhythms to welcome to music. We've actually had two videos made of this. So this will be new rhythms and we actually included some half notes. So you might want to do a little pre-teaching there. Um, so this is a new, oh, sorry. I didn't even include the second rhythm video. This is the body percussion with welcome to music. I can see I have the wrong video in here. I will change it. I will put the body percussion video in. I need my little notes to make my lists. We echo Bobo. Again, he says, kiss me, I'm Irish. We're decorating him for various holidays. Review when I was one, I ate a bun, going over the sea. So fun action song. I like to start with something that keeps a beat at the beginning of my pre-KK one, even my two lessons. The Old Grey Cat, if you're on Zoom, going to be a little tricky. We'll we'll make a cat and mouse game. Um, and the kids love to dramatize this particular game. So they can be both parts. They can be the mice and they can be the cat that's sleeping and dramatize the song and make up movements. They will enjoy that. If, um, if you're not able to play the game the traditional way, the traditional way I have the cat sleeping and then at the end the cat wakes up and tries and tags the mouse and if the mouse gets caught the mouse has to lie on its back with its hands and its feet up. It's it's really quite funny but I don't think anybody's going to be able to do it that way this year so instead create a challenge. Choose a cat, choose a mouse and then give them a challenge. Let's see if those little people can do push-ups or frog jumps. Make them work, make them sweat a little bit. And then I've created for them one of these reproducible storybooks so it's this one is two pages long and what uh what you do is you photocopy this you give a copy to each child and each child draws pictures to illustrate we also have um many illustrated ones this is not illustrated this is actually brand new i made it just for this lesson um, because i i do think these reproducible storybooks are really helpful for teachers that are in person not allowed to sing. This way you can experience a song, you listen to it, have the kids track the words. You could project this and track the words so that they know what to illustrate in each box and then away they go. Now while we're on the theme of cats, let's review the cat from Peter and the Wolf. And if you haven't seen this, uh, my favorite part of the video is where they sing the little cat song. What is that? It's, it's the cat on the clarinet. It plays a meow, 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 meow song. You'll never think of that theme the same way again. And then Big Cats, uh, Royal March of the Lions from Carnival of the Animals. Um, this is the primary video. Live animal footage is really engaging for your students. And then we have the listening map. And what I have been doing with my students is during the introduction, pretend to sleep like a lion. During the fanfare, pretend to play the trumpet. During the theme, prowl through the grass like a lion. And on the roar, show the roar like a lion. And there are six roars in here. One's just kind of a little growl, but there are six roars and they're shown in the listening map. Let's see if I can find that quickly while I'm doing this. There's the introduction, sleep like the lion. Oops, I missed the fanfare. When you get to the fanfare, play the trumpet, stand at attention because the king's there. And then when the theme starts, prowl. And I let the kids move around the room. If you have to, help them move in their spaces. If you're on Zoom, they can move right where they are. And here's what the roars look like, show loud. Right, getting loud. So that is a great, loud, quiet activity, a good time to teach crescendo, decrescendo. And I've made a lion's coloring page. Um, six tries later, here's my first ones. Printing was too small. 
still too small. <laughs> so we ended up with this one and I actually have changed it from introduction to intro so it doesn't take up so much space. But um, this is printing practice for first grade, which is good for them. And then they can color the lion. And I'm going to keep doing Carnival of the Lion um, probably until uh, end of the school year. And there'll be one each week in the lessons. And at the end, I'll post in the Music Play Teachers group on Facebook a cover, and they can have a booklet of all the Carnival of the Animals. And if you think about the little listing map we watched, there's the introduction. He's sleeping. There's the fanfare. There he's prowling. And there's his roars. So it's a miniature version of the listing map for the kids. Lucky Leprechaun, um, again, going to likely have to adapt the game, but march during the A section. And then during the B section, you do a sailor's round. Trip. You fold your hands and you kick your heels out. And I like to get the kids jumping, get their heart rate up, whether they're on Zoom or in person. Um, we don't want them on the screen too much. Review as time permits from last week, we are dancing in the forest, sing the echoes in the music time is over. So that is grade one lesson 24 um, for March week one. Now I'm going to grade two and here's grade two lesson 24, March week one and Again, I think I'm really going to enjoy this lesson. I made a reproducible storybook for the lollipop song because, again, I, I feel these reproducible books are a really good way to get kids still listening, responding, learning new songs, even if they're not allowed to sing. So this is the body percussion video with Welcome to Music. So stop. That is, uh, we still like to do the welcome song, but I'll have to say it's really nice to have a little variety in it. Cut the cake. I would have the kids read the rhythms and then read the words. Good reading practice, even grade twos. We have lots of grade twos beginning of the year that don't read yet. So this is a good thing to always do with the kids. Read the rhythms, read the words. And then <clears throat> we can listen to the song. This is one of our new recordings, I think. <laughs> And of course, we can't hold hands and make a circle, but we can do the motions and then play this as a challenge game instead of um, instead of the chase game that, that it is. Another thing that I like to do with the kids with these chase games, if it's nice enough to take them outside, line them up, designate a finish line and have a race. Sing the song, go, race to the finish line. Wear them out. Now we're going to do It's Raining and in March, grade two, I do a whole series of songs related to rain. So if you want to put together an informants or an informal program on rain, keep that in mind. So your students may not have ever seen a pickup note before. It's a note that comes before the full, first full measure. So if I was reading the rhythms, I would just read ta, tu, ta, ta, to talk and I would ignore the fact that it's in cut time. I would just read the rhythms names that I use. If you use do's and due days, by all means do that. There is a solfa challenge for its rating. And this is great practice for the kids to be able to name pitches. If I make a mistake, I lose a star. But as long as I get, um, I have one star left, I have won the game. Um, if you prefer to do uh, pitch letter names, do the note name challenge instead. And then we have the song Lollipop Tree. That was me a long time ago. And these are my students in a music festival.
And the kids really love this song. It was a great performance piece because it's got a range of expression. Winter came and days grew cold. It slows down. And <clears throat> when they get treats off the tree, even in winter, they, um, they're happy and it goes fast again. So <clears throat> they can sing along with the chorus after they've watched the performance. So listening and responding to a children's performance and then singing themselves. And again, if you can't sing, I've made it into a little storybook. And so they can listen and respond. Then they can listen to the song and illustrate the song and take home a little storybook of the song. You could give them a link to the song in uh, on the beta site to, um, to link to a module. You just click in the URL. If you track down the video of the song by searching in the song list for Lollipop, you can get them a direct link to the song and then they could sing along at home. Um, grade twos, we're gonna learn about Handle. It's a short little video, it's under two minutes. And then find scarves and do movement. And I got up at six one morning and made the movement to this. It took me a whole hour to figure it out. Back and forth. And then bring the scarves down. That's the A section the first time. The second time it's quieter. And so the movements are smaller. And bring them down again. Here's the B section. Up, 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 down, up, down, up, down. Circles. So a fun way. And because water music was written um, to be performed on a barge in the Thames, that's what we have for background here. Review a sailor went to CCC. Um, we made this as a desk clap game. A sailor went to CCC to see what he could see, see, see. It, um, I still like the partner aspect of this, but honestly, the desk clapping is fun and it still is a brain challenge for the kids to get it. And then the music time is over. So this is grade two, lesson 24, March week one. Lots of extensions. If you have two lessons in the week, condense it if you only have one. Now I'm going to grade three, lesson 24. March week one. And in this one, we're going to, again, use one of these beautiful new rhythm play alongs. And this one is 16th notes. Two, three, two ready, go. through the whole thing, but it really, they're just all fun and appealing. Um, use different kinds of body percussion. Um, you might tell them pat all the 16th notes and the notes that follow it, or you can play them on instruments. You could desk drum with rhythm sticks. You can do all sorts of things. Um, I have Poison Melody with uh, Do Re Mi So La, and we are going to learn the song of the frog. So read the words together. There is a new rhythm in this song, and it's right here. It's eighth note, eighth rest. So this is an eighth note. An eighth note is half a beat in two, four time. An eighth rest, and it's half a beat. And so then we want them to sing the song and perhaps read the rhythms. There we go. So I would have them read the rhythms. I, in my time names, I call this T, 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 T. T. And I call it T because it's half a TT. I call this a S because it's a shorter rest than this one, which I call SH. Up to you. You use whatever names you like. Um, if you are in person and can't sing, you could try playing the melody on a virtual instrument. To prepare them for that, um, I have a pitch letter names worksheet in supporting resources. If they do those pitch letter names, then they could link to the virtual instrument. If I can split my screen and see both at the same time, that's one way of doing this. I personally think it would be a great activity for them to 
um, write the letter names down on the worksheet and then play. And if I want, I can use the key number pad, five, six, seven. So it, uh, that again is a good activity for your kids. Um, Pitch letter names, link to virtual instrument, play it in the house. Um, the song Dinah is not appropriate to be doing in our schools any longer. So I wrote playing in the house, which uses 16th notes. It uses the pitches uh, la, so, la, so, do, mi. I should do this in order. Do, re, mi, so, la. So it's a good little reading song. And it is written as a rondo. We sing the, the theme and then we improvise on instruments. So I've got my pool noodle scrapers here. I'm going to improvise on instruments during the B sections. Playing in the house. Um, it says sticks in the video. It could be any woods. And then you use metals, um, shakes and scrapes, and drums to to do uh, the song. If your kids are at home, they find whatever they can to improvise during the B, C, D, and E sections. And grade threes are going to learn about Beethoven. And this is a short video on Beethoven and his life. And then we play along with Turkish March. If they already have their instruments handy, having two instrument songs in a row is helpful. And then review last week's As You Have Time, the Shiny Penny Game, the Koi Melinda song. And that is our lesson for grade three, lesson 24, March week one. Now I'm going to look at grade four, lesson 24 for March week one. And we're going to do one of these lovely new rhythm play-alongs. And this one is with eighth and 16th notes. I'm gonna go full screen. This one is so pretty. I wanna be on a beach so bad. Nice long intro so you can feel the beat. Here we go. I hope you are loving those new rhythm videos as much as I am. Now we're going to learn Scotland's Burning, and I wanted to show the kids' demo first. The movements I do are pat, pat, clap, clap, pat, pat, clap, clap. Scotland's Burning, Scotland's Burning. Look out, look out. Fire, 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 fire. Pour on water, pour on water. So that is um, a really, this is a, a movement round that I have uh, found to be really successful with fourth graders. Um, they, they seem to anchor to the movements and so it's helpful. Then we want to show them the solfa notes. And so this is the extended tone ladder. Take out the notes that we don't have. So, so, do, do, so, so, do, do, re, mi, re, mi. There's no fob. So, 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 so. And then, <clears throat> so, so, do, do, so, so, do, do. So it shows the kids what the hand signs are. It shows them where they fall in the scale. If you teach soulfish, useful tool. Um, <clears throat> I've included the note highlights video for this. The note highlights video always goes through lyrics first and then solfa. Um, if you're not totally fluent in solfa yourself, doing these is a good way to help you learn 
soulfish as well as the kids and then sing it as a round with the, the movements. If you are on Zoom, I suggest teacher sing part one and have students sing part two. Divide the round at the halfway point instead of doing it as a four part round, just reduce it to two. Uh, learn about the Highland Pipes. This is our video about bagpipes. And we have um, licensed a second video that's going to go in here. Uh, currently, it's a safe share link on the bagpipes, but we've actually been able to license this from the creator of the video. And that will take out the uh, advertisement for the Scottish Festival, and it starts here. And he does a great video showing how the Highland bagpipes work. Increase or decrease the overall length and change the pitch of the note produced. So all the hows that the you ever wanted to know about the Highland bagpipes. So it's going to be embedded in here. Um, yes, we were able to negotiate that with the creator of the video. Uh, the song Categories is actually a very good reading song for fourth grade. It uses only So and Me. So if your kids are not great readers, this is one where they could easily read the Soulfish. And then we have an outside demo of the Categories game with us all spaced more than six feet apart. So <clears throat> this is how you can play the game during a pandemic. We um, are continuing in the recorder melodies and this week it is suggested to learn 20 oh why did it do that okay i'm going to figure out why that isn't working that shouldn't be let's go over here and get to it another way no i want toolbox virtual instruments and here's the recorder xylophone play along and I can make it full screen, but song 22, here's how I change my songs. Song 22 is a rondo and we're given the B section and, or sorry, we're given the A section. And then I want the students to improvise using B, A, and G. and then create their own melody. So I've given a worksheet at the top where you can have kids you do it in a printable format, playing with this xylophone. Um, yes, they're in, it's, I'm in the wrong spot here. I have to go back here. Uh, so here is a, a composed BAG using the worksheet, or you can use the melody composition tool on musicplayonline.com and my suggestion is to use level five and they can use the notes D, E, G, A, B. You might not want them to use D if they haven't been playing it yet. Um, end on G or E and that's important because if they end on G or E, you can accompany with ORF instruments. If they end on a G, you accompany with a G, D, Bordeaux. Simple Bordeaux, in fact, I can play it for you. So I would, um, I want this, a G, D, Bordeaux, if they end on the note G, an E, B, Bordeaux, if they end on an E. And so this puts them into E minor, if they end on E, if they end on G, it puts them into G major. So I'm glad I have that tool out and ready. So they can compose on the staff. You can ask them to screenshot and send you a screenshot of their composition, or you can have them write it out on the worksheet. And then listening kit four, number 11, is a rondo by Mion. And the form is A-A-B-A-C-A-D-A. -A -A -A. And so I created movement with plates to reflect. So the A sections are all circle, circle, three, four, five, six on seven, eight, we go around and up. And then the B section is up, 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 and down, 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 down. And then back to the A with the circles. Uh, the C section was step, 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 
five, six, and circle seven, eight, and then the A section again, and this, uh, the D section, I can't remember what I did. Um, I think I crossed, cross, 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 and there's a little extra interlude at the end of the D, and I held for that and went back into the A to finish the song. So easy, easy plate routine for your fourth graders. I left this this up uh, in the lesson. It's from three lessons ago, the Country Kitty Boogie, Boogie, and this is with the music. I thought if you've been teaching that line dance, having it here will make it handy to review it. Grandpa's Whiskers, last week the grade fours wrote a new verse for it. And so if they've written some verses, sing your new verses too. So that is grade four, lesson 24 for March week one. Now I'm going to go to the grade five and middle school lessons. We've been doing the history of jazz, but if you want a little variety from this, you can opt to do the Chumbara lesson or the history of jazz lesson. They're both included in here. So Chumbara is a song from grade five and it's a very fun, all our worksheets are here, including the Chumbara words, if you want them. Um, I'm doing the rhythm play along, again, our new rhythm videos. And this is one in 5-4 meter because we've been learning the 5-4 groove song from Music Play 5. And then we're going to learn to sing the song Chumbara. It's my, I don't know why my video has disappeared, but it is there. I will make a mental note to check that. And then we can watch the kids doing hand clap patterns. And these are patterns that go between us and a neighbor. So you're going to have to create hand clap patterns that the kids can do solo um, and just get ideas from this. And that's how I've typically done the song Chumbara. But Artie Almeida is full of really good ideas. And one of her ideas is to create a syllable scheme. These are my words, not Artie's, but um, it will give you an idea. So, oh, I'm missing one page. So I have three pages of words. And I think if you want Artie's words, go to her website and she has them on her website. So the first syllable is these words. The second syllable is going to be just the vowels. And the third syllable is going to be these words. And so what I've done is I've copied them onto three colors of cardstock. Now, if pre-COVID, what I would do is I would have three bags and I'd invite three children to come up and they'd each choose um, one out of the bag. So out of bag one, I've got bug. Out of bag two, I've got O. Oh. Out of bag three, I've got fly. So now instead of singing chambara, 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 we're going to sing fly a bug oh fly, 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 bug, 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 bug. And the kids have a riot doing their new words. Now it's hard because you can't invite the kids up and touch shared materials right now. One of our music play teachers made a randomizer for Chumbara. So if I click the randomizer, diggy fly, diggy fly, diggy fly, diggy fly. And if I click again for the next student, I get diggy boo, diggy boo, diggy boo. I think this is Really, really fun and a fun way to keep the fun going with the kids when they don't get the chance to pick their own syllables out. So that's an external link to the randomizer for Chumbara. There is a Solfa challenge and a note name challenge for Chumbara. So if you're teaching Solfa to your children, get them to do this option. If you teach note names, option two. And then we have some slides because Chumbara uses the entire C scale. It's a perfect uh, example. And so we teach about the musical scale as a series of ascending and descending notes of different pitches arranged in a particular pattern. The musical scale is made up with whole steps. Whole step, whole step. This is a whole step from F to G where there's a black note in between. It's a whole step. <clears throat> you can tell a half step because there's no black key in between. And we do have in the virtual instruments, if I go, I chose this one, I'm going to have to 
kind of go all over again to find a different one. Okay, I'm going to have to just click out of that. We do have a virtual piano on the site. If I go into beta, see if it's in instruments. We're working on this virtual instruments. Let's see if they're there. I want the piano. Okay, it's not up yet. Um, we're moving the virtual instruments into instruments. They're not there yet. They're we're still in the toolbox. And I want the piano. <clears throat> now I can make it full screen and I can show the kids. C to D is a whole step. If I go C to C sharp, it's a half step. So I need two half steps to make a whole. If I go E to F, it's a half step. And again, if I want to use keyboard controls, I can use keyboard controls instead. But that piano interactive is a good tool if you're teaching scales. And then slide four, we ask the kids to tell which, uh, whether they're half or whole steps. F to G, F to G, there's a black key in between. It's a whole step. And the answer slide follows. So this comes right out of the concept slides from Music Play. And if you're in person, you could play Chumbara, Chumbara on Boomwhackers. So this is going to take me right to the Chumbara Boomwhackers activity. That's what I mean with, with the, the beta site. You can copy a URL and then your students that you give that link to go right straight to that song. And I can make this full screen. This tells what tubes I need to play. This tells me what boomwhacker chords. And if you've got some good ukulele players, they can accompany with the chords. So the first time is C, 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 E, D, C, G, G, G. I've got kids notes. It tells me what, what notes to play. Second time, colored notation. And again, that's helpful hints for your boomwhacker players. Third time, standard notation. And there are accompaniment tracks with this. And the first time, quite slow. G, 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 F, E. So that's a whole lesson on Chambara. I want to close out of this. Um, if I want to do the jazz part of the lesson, review the 5-4 groove. There's opportunities to improvise in the song. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about Miles Davis, do the worksheet. The listening assignment is uh, take five. And so that is the wrong worksheet. I'm going to have to fix that one too. I, this is not the Miles Davis worksheet. The listening assignment for Miles Davis is, so what? This will be a safe share link that will take you there. And then we learn about John Coltrane. And we do have the right worksheet in here. And the listening ass assessment for John Col Coltrane is Giant Steps. And here's a link to the song Giant Steps. There is a storybook called Giant Steps. That would be a really good tie-in with this as well. So look for that. So that is the grade five and the middle school lesson 24 for March week one. I'm Denise Gagne. Thank you so much for joining me on this very quick overview of lesson 24.